people will associate Quakers uh, primarily in the United States with Pennsylvania and uh, actually wasn't the first place the Quakers came to in the American colonies. Quakers began in England, 1640s and 50s, and uh, as missionaries, you know, those who went forth to share their experience, to lead others into convincement, uh, first came to Virginia. Uh, the first known Quakers in the colonies, I think, uh, I believe, was Elizabeth Harris in 1656 in Virginia. Uh, there were Quakers in the Carolinas by the 1660s, and uh, so they were washing ashore in various places, initially as missionaries, uh, carrying the gospel message as friends. But in the uh, 1670s, uh, William Penn was uh, uh, a convinced friend and was offered a tract of land in what we today call Pennsylvania uh, by the King of England, who owed his father, Admiral Penn, a large debt for Admiral Penn's having loaned a significant sum of money for uh, the prosecution of a war. Penn refused to accept the land until he sent his agents over to treat with the Native Americans who actually lived there on how they would live together. And Penn actually bought the land from the Native Americans. 1681-1682 uh, mythologized in the Treaty of Shackamaxon and paintings by Benjamin West and Edward Hicks and those sorts of folk. But uh, whatever the historical details were, Penn did seek to uh, live peaceably with the Native Americans in uh, what became known as Pennsylvania. Uh, Penn didn't call it Pennsylvania. Uh, the king said, uh, I want to honor your father by calling it Penn's Woods, Penn's Sylvania, to honor Admiral Penn. And so the name stuck. It became, uh, for William Penn, an opportunity to display what became known as the Holy Experiment, which we understand in two different ways. Uh, it was an experiment in how to organize our political and religious and uh, social lives around those testimonies of friends, around the Quaker understanding of restoring original Christianity. Uh, so it would be a place where people could practice their religion freely without the dictates of, of the crown, where all would be equal uh, in, uh, in the society, uh, regardless of their, their class and their religious background. And uh, a place that would not be organized around uh, the military power and might, uh, where anyone who believed in God could run for political office and serve uh, in civil society. But it was also uh, understood to be a place where you, you go and you would experience uh, the power of that life. Uh, Quakers talked about knowing truth experimentally, which meant experientially. So a holy experiment was not just, we're going to try this and see if it works. It was actually come here and experience what life, uh, living as if the kingdom of God has come on earth as it is in heaven, is like. And uh, many did. Uh, so many Quakers settled in the Delaware Valley in Pennsylvania uh, because of that. So it wasn't yeah, as a refuge. Uh, folk didn't flock to the colonies to escape persecution. Uh, in fact, uh, if they got to Massachusetts, uh, they were hanged. <laughs> uh, it was not a capital offense to be Quaker in England. It was in Massachusetts, and uh, several Quakers were hanged for the uh, crime of uh, driving while Quaker in, uh, in Massachusetts. Uh, they came to bear truth, to bear witness, and before long, uh, almost half of the original American colonies had Quaker majorities or Quaker in government. Rhode Island, uh, Jersey, Delaware, uh, Pennsylvania, and the Carolinas all had significant Quaker uh, governments and uh, leadership uh, well into the early 1700s. Uh, and from that center of the Delaware uh, Quaker Valley, Quaker culture, uh, friends started spreading out. Uh, as it got expensive there or crowded there in the mid-1700s, uh, Quakers went down the uh, Shenandoah Valley into the Carolinas, uh, went north, went west. They hit the Appalachian Mountains and headed south, eventually over the Appalachians and into Ohio, Indiana, uh, 